Welcome to Sweet Talk SLP. I'm Crystal and I'm a pediatric speech language pathologist. Today is another episode of Sweet Talk Tips. But before I get started, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, I invite you to subscribe, like this video, and share it with your friends. Let's get started. Welcome back, my friends. I took a week off. Well, I took technically two and a half weeks off for vacation. Videos went live except for last week because life and this whatever i'm dealing with and of course today is another episode of sweet talk tips and i decided to highlight a speech sound the k sound which is one of the sounds that i dislike working on when i am sick <laughs> but this is like the after effects of everything i've been dealing with so we're gonna get through it together these tips that i'm going to offer are for my slps and my slpas However, some of these things can be used at home and I will discuss them as we kind of move along. First things first, my SLPs out there, you've already taken inventory and completed a thorough and dynamic speech evaluation. You probe stimulability for the speech sounds that you are most concerned with. You have an idea of what errors or omissions the child is making and what they might be stimulable for. With that said, let's get to number one. Number one, you want to provide the child with as many different types of cues as you can so that they understand the sound that you are working on. You wanna remind them of the placement of the sound, remind them it's a back sound, and maybe use a mirror, pointing, feeling, and knowing where the sound is supposed to be made. Offer reminders of the sound that you're working on in a different way, such as making your coughing sound, or clearing your throat, or, or clearing popcorn from your throat, or whatever cue you feel the child would best understand, or works for you, or pairs well with your speech sound cue cards that you're using. So let's get into it. So number two is having a child lay on their back. Why do we do this? Well, because gravity and we're trying to make a back sound and if you're laying on your back sound and you're trying to make that sound, gravity will help the child to make that sound. Does this always work? Absolutely not. That's why I'm here to give you other tips and tricks. Does it work? Yes, sometimes it does. It is something you do wanna try sometimes is having them lay on their back. You lay on your back as well. Also touching the back of the throat at the same time as you're working on this goal. You can often pair it with number three, which is having the mouth open. I find that this helps, especially if you have a mirror, to see what your tongue is doing. If you're trying to produce the k the way that I just did with my mouth closed, it's very easy for your tongue to stay where it's always been, which is in the front of the mouth, and do a t, t sound instead. So if your mouth is open and you're practicing the k sound, it helps the child visualize and feel where that placement needs to be. So you can pair that with a child laying down on the floor and having their mouth wide open. Number four. Now this one is for my SLPs and SLPAs. Parents, you may not want to try this. Using a tongue depressor, preferably flavored, or some sort of small lollipop or candy, or I've seen pretzel sticks with raisins stuck on them, whatever it is, whatever tool it is that you want to use to help the child keep their tongue down. So you use it to apply pressure to the tongue and move it down so that instead of them elevating it when you're trying to produce that sound, they're keeping it down, which is what we want for that production of the k sound. Sorry, my AC just turned on. I'll try to speak a little bit louder. And number five is using a Cheerio or Fruit Loop or other type of round cereal that a child can place their tongue tip in the middle of the cereal. You place the cereal behind the bottom front teeth and have the child hold it with their tongue while they're trying to produce that sound. And just keeping in mind and reminding the child that you don't want them to let go of that Cheerio. So it keeps their tongue down instead of them elevating when they are fronting that sound and producing that t sound. With all that said, the inventory that you did during your evaluation will give you a better idea of how to go about targeting this sound. And also you can try all of these things and find the right fit for the child. Now you don't wanna do all of them in one session. You don't wanna try one and then abandon it and try another and abandon it. Like give, give it a little bit of time. But knowing what your inventory it is, make a plan. I have a little girl right now 
who we are working on that sound and she is not able to produce it in isolation in cv combinations but you know where she can produce it she can produce it to say aquí as in here in spanish so i'm working off of that to help her with that sound and so i'm adding sounds i'm adding extra cvs next to it a aquí aquí to try to help with that cv combination and i'm moving it around and i'm doing all the different things to help her realize that she is able to make that sound and just kind of growing off of that if the child is able to produce it in isolation then sometimes you may want to look at minimal pairs or the h aspiration trick so that that helps with the production of the sound versus using the T sound. I do have a video on that trick and I will link it up above and down below. So just see where your child is. You know, are they able to produce it at all? Are they stimulable in some positions of words? And then go off of that. Our speech therapy sessions are always changing. And if you've tried this sound and you feel like you've exhausted all the different tips and tricks that you have under your book and that you've asked other SLPs and nothing has worked, it's okay to take a break and work on something else and then come back and visit it later. I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope that these tips helped you. I hope that you found at least one that maybe you haven't used before or that you've heard of and you still haven't tried and maybe you have a kid in your caseload that you may need to try it with. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos, I hope that you'll consider subscribing, like this video, share it with your friends, ring that notification bell, you'll be notified of my weekly uploads. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you on the next one.